It's not very electronic. No, it's not, especially. I'm gonna put rock. Definitely rock. Um. That's really fits world music. It's got that one song. <laughs> okay. <no. laughs> Jeff Lynn is not Jeff Lynn is not world music. <clears throat> How was your day, Coop? It was pretty good. I made some homemade pudding. Ooh, that sounds nice. It's pretty nice. That, that turned out pretty okay. Did a little cooking, did some shopping. Read a bit. Pretty relaxing day overall. How about yourself? That's good. Oh, excuse me. Um, woke up. Got out of bed. Been playing video games. Yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Kerbal, I'm guessing. Yeah. Thought about streaming. Mm-hmm. Decided against it. I need more stuff to watch. <laughs> uh, just like uh, in general. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just because. Uh, usually there's Twitch streams that I'll watch, but Sunday is uh, a little sparse. A little sparse. I guess I'm adding to that issue since I didn't stream. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like the change really you want to see in the world. The same thing. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Oh, audio shop went live. That's me and you. But yeah, just been just been chilling for the most part. Oh, nice! A nice relaxing Sunday. Hmm. Not looking forward to uh, going back to work. But... No. No. But just in general. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna telework tomorrow though, so it'll be all right. Okay. Which they might not be happy about, but uh, that's that's what my schedule is. I I telework two days a week because uh it's not safe to be there oh yeah and just because i've not been there for five days doesn't mean i'm gonna start going in more it doesn't work that way makes sense to me you should tell them to shove it pay you more and then take your manager's job <laughs> i don't want his job oh. <laughs> Also, I might it it might be closed. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't checked work email for a week, so there's the possibility that I wouldn't I would show up to work and I wouldn't be able to get in. <laughs> Where is everybody? Wait, well, you haven't checked your email at all? <laughs> no. Why would I? It's work email. Yeah. Okay. It's work, you know? Oh, yeah. But sometimes there's emergencies. I like to just keep an eye on my email in case. No, I'm not being paid for it, so why bother? <laughs> uh, the model employee. Listen, if they want me to be on call, they can pay me to be on call. <laughs> but Sam, I don't pay you, and you answer my texts. <laughs> you, yeah, because I like you. <laughs> We're Aww. friends. Oh. And plus, Matt pays me to be on call for you. That's fair. <laughs> Matt is my sugar father. Yeah. What about you? What have you been up to today besides the pudding? Oh, like I said, pretty lazy. I woke up uh, pretty late because I went to bed pretty late because we were watching robots last night. <laughs> so when you say pretty late, what is waking up pretty late for you? Uh, like 11. Mm, mm-hmm. That's pretty late. I'll concede that is pretty late. <clears throat> but I also stayed up to like two, so. Yeah. I don't remember when I got up today. I gotta get my eight hours. I think it was a bit later because I had stayed up to like five the night before. <laughs> hmm. We were playing Minecraft. Minecraft. It was a good time. Minecraft, more like, uh, um, <sighs> Minecraft. Sorry, I got nothing. You'll get there. <laughs> Come on, you, I believe in you. My brain's turned to mush. mush. It's filled with pudding. 
No, yeah. I was thinking about making good. figgy pudding because you know it's like nearing Christmas. That's but apparently that's that's just put that's just pudding with like nuts and fruits and stuff in, and yeah. that doesn't sound appetizing. No. So just made banana pudding instead. Also, it hasn't even been Thanksgiving yet, you heathen. I mean, Christmas is a little less, a little over a month away. We're pretty close. It's a month. A month's a long time. One twelfth of a year. Yes, that that is true. No. It's not really. In the grand scheme of things, though, not very long time at all. You're right. It's not. It's a mere wink in the eye of the span of the universe. You're correct. Exactly. So really, every day is Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> On a, in a cosmic sense. In a cosmic sense, it's always Christmas. Because <laughs> so, what's uh, one Sam. year among 14 billion? Exactly. So uh, where's my gift, Sam? <laughs> you owe me several billion in backlogs. <laughs> I owe you 14 billion <laughs> gifts and backlog. I need to do my... Uh... Taxes? No, I no, need to uh, do my wish list for my mom's side Christmas. Mm, I do too. They're doing like a draw Get... thing. Oh, like a like a white elephant? No, like what we did last time, where we put all our names in, and uh, then it then it tells you what they put on their wish list. You know, what I'm talking. Remember what we did uh. last year. Yeah, was that not a white elephant? No, white elephants where you just buy something and then uh, everybody fights over it. Oh, this one's like it's like specific. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to make a list, but I'm not good with that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when people say, "Hey, what do you want?" I immediately forget everything I've ever wanted in my life. Everything you've wanted in life. Mm-hmm. What if I got you a fiver for, of Jeff Lynn? <laughs> I don't think Jeff Lynn has a fiver. I don't think he knows what fiver is. <laughs> Probably not. He's pretty old. He is pretty old. He's like, what, 80? Well, he's in the 70s. Mm. Well, he might be 80. Now. Yeah, okay, 70, 72. Yeah, early he's born, born two years after the end of World War II. That's pretty old. That is pretty old. And uh, ancient. Who knows, who knows if we're gonna get another ELO album? Definitely not another ELO album. You don't think we got two in? Uh, we got one 2016, one 2018. Oh yeah. Well, those are okay. I guess I was ELO. It's mostly Jefflin. <laughs> it is Jefflin. <laughs> yes, it's just Jefflin. <laughs> well, if we get another Jefflin album, that'll be uh... no. I doubt we'll get another Jeff Lynne album. Because he only had two single albums. Well, yeah, but his new ELO albums might as well be Jeff Lynne albums. He does all the instrumentation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he won't call it a solo album because he'll do it under the ELO flag to get a, you know. More sales. <laughs> yeah, more sales. I can't blame him. And, you know, it's... It kind of locks him into a style, but <laughs> locks him in. He's bursting with too much creative energy. <laughs> Needs to be funneled. Well, the, the the last one wasn't as good as Alone in the Universe. <laughs> I think my first song's gonna be a electro song, and then my second one's gonna be a rockabilly song. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it since you're already <laughs> trying to start talking about it. Um. Apparently you're a lot louder. Let me see. I don't think. No, you're still at the same old, same old. I think I'm just being real quiet. I'm also not. Oh, yeah. I'm not looking at the microphone. That's probably part of it. Bring it in. You got that <laughs> little arm thing for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I moved it closer. Uh, let me get organized here. Okay. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Audio Shop podcast. It's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> um. Well, we had Halloween, and then I had to move some furniture last week. Um, so I last week I got back at like seven, and I was <laughs> I was not prepared to do a podcast. Um, after moving, using my muscles oh, all week weekend, just doing some lifting. Um, but today we're doing Thanksgiving. 
uh, as you can see on the screen there, <laughs> is the Jeff Lynn turkey. That Perfectly. I year. You can't even tell the Photoshop. <laughs> exactly. Perfect blending. Uh, I'm really happy of how I did with that. Um, it's, that's it's actually a 3D model of Jeff Lynn's head that he made in Blender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. That's Jeff can't Lynn. Can't even tell. Um, and today we're going to be talking about his solo, first solo album, Armchair Theater. Um, and give a little bit of history since I know more about yeah. this than Coop. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was his first solo album of two. He's only got two. This came out in 1990, and the second one came out in 2012. Uh, so a little bit of time between them. Um, there was a compilation album before Armchair Theater came out, but that was like songs from a bunch of past bands he'd been in. Like there's an ELO song on there. I'm pretty sure there was a Traveling Wilbury song on there. There's a couple other bands he was in. Um, but for this album, Richard Tandy, the keyboard player for Electric Light Orchestra, uh, is is in quite a few of the songs, as well as George Harrison and Tom Petty. Mm, and Tom mm. Petty actually helped write one of the songs. Uh, so this album has two covers, September Song and Stormy Weather. Um, and then it's got two, not solos, two singles, which are Every Little Thing and Lift Me Up, which are in the first three songs on the album. So there's not really A and B. It's kind of just, it's 36 minutes long. So it's, there's not. It's tight. It's tight. Yeah, it's a short, short one. Um, this album comes off the back of him working with Tom Petty, co-producing uh, some little songs such as Free Falling, I Won't Back Down, and Running Down a Dream. And he released it just before working with the remaining Beatles, which was just everybody but Lennon, on the uh, anthology album series. So he was pretty pretty busy during this time period. Busy, busy bee. Yeah, I, I didn't realize he had uh, produced so much of Tom Petty's stuff. Oh, they were friends from their traveling Wilbury days. Mm -hmm. They had a whole album together. They made two whole albums together. So, pretty tight. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a little bit of background. And of course, Jeff Lynn, uh, he's an old dude. He's the singer for Electric Light Orchestra. And he basically had a finger in a bunch of the different pies of music. He still does a little bit, but not as much. Oh, he's in his 70s. Mm -hmm. He can barely get out of the armchair now. I mean, there was that video... I can't remember what song it was, but it was, he recorded it in his home studio and he, you know, in this, al this, this album, he actually doesn't play every instrument, but in the most recent ELO albums, uh, which we <laughs> reviewed last year, he does play every instrument, uh, in alone in the universe. I'm pretty sure the only, the only, um, other credits given are his daughter comes on to sing for a song. And then there was one guy that helped with some of the other the percussion stuff. But he wasn't even drums. Jeff Lynn played the drums. <laughs> so uh, this one is actually, you know, a bunch of different artists helped him a little bit. So instrumentation is a little more varied. Yeah, a little more varied. But, oh, no, I was, I was talking about his... Uh, the other music it's a it's a newer music video I can't, I can't remember the song for the life of me but it's him playing every part and he combines them all together so he's sitting back on the drums he's tuning the bass um he's on second guitar and then he walks in with lead guitar and vocals and he's like all right jeff and then he's like all right jeff <laughs> and they're all it's talking an old to guy each thing other to do. They start playing. it's so good i discovered good. this new app on snapchat that makes me look like i'm in two places <laughs> except he's playing all the instruments at the same time it's a pretty good song um anyway jumping jumping right on into it with uh track number one every little thing every little thing yeah so the song uh starts with this kind of uh i guess banging drum and like uh, this kind of very uh punctuated sax uh throughout of it Yeah, it's it's got some really nice sax throughout the entirety of the song. And it's the first single on the album. Um, 
So it comes in pretty strong. Listening to it and analyzing it, it's a little weaker than it sounds, you know, just listening to it. Um, you know, taking off the rose colored glasses for a minute. <laughs> oh. Um, but it's it, there's a lot going on. It's got a little bit of harp that sneaks in there in the background to back out the backing track. Um, there's a little bit of strings that sneak in every once in a while. There's not as much progression as I would have liked, but there's so many instruments that rise out of the mix and play something different than drop down back into the mix that it kind of has new life throughout. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty solid backing instrumentation. Um, yeah. I, I'd say for the most part, a lot of the songs this album don't have like much progression, like sonically. Um, Jeff kind of puts it on the table at the beginning and just kind of goes from there. Um, though there are some flourishes I like going on. I, I like the chorus when it comes in uh, with those vocal harmonies and before it like kind of backs down back into the uh, the brass. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like like you said, the instrumentation is pretty solid. Um, it fills out well. It's lush. Um, it's kind of like a kind of a not even like pure rock. It's kind of like this almost band rock fusion going on. Yeah, kind of. It's got that. It's you can definitely get ELO um, vibes from it. Not not as much from this one. There's some ones later that are like this could just be an ELO song. Um, but yeah, the the sax in this one is so good. The, I love the sax line in it. Yeah, though I feel like it could use like a like a sax solo going on. It's kind of. I guess it kind of. I, I guess it's it's got a little bit of it. Or something busted out, you know. Mm. And I'm I'm a bit of a sucker for the vocals on this one. I really like the the harmonics and all that jazz. Yeah, there's some good har- harmonies throughout the entire album. There really are. I'll jump into track number two if you're ready, then Coop. Yes. Track number two. Don't let go. Uh. <laughs> this one's uh. Can I say what I had belt. written down for my first? No, line? no, go, yeah, go, yeah, go for it. Go Cooper's for it. gonna hate this one. This is, sounds like Jingle Bell Rock at <laughs> <laughs> the beginning. Some rockabilly, rockabilly undertones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, sure, yeah, whatever. That genre died like eighty years ago, so let's just keep doing it. <laughs> Jeff Lynne was born in forty-seven, so I'm sure he's you know sentimental about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, why? It's never the be- it's never like the best song in the album. <laughs> it's, it's so particular. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I, I like the I like the kind of vocal breaks where everything cuts out and they just go all oh, shucks, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a little funny. Um, and they do add like a little bit like sax. I think I like the yeah. one twenty mark, which you know is a little fun. It's kind of a fusion of genres. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Not not my not my favorite. Yeah, it's, so, um, it's definitely older style, but I really like it. Those uh, breaks you were talking about with the harmony, oh, they're so nice. There's so many layered vocals st- stacked on top of each other. It just sounds amazing. Um, and then, like you were saying with the saxophone, it's a it's a alto sax for this one, so it's a bit higher, um, and it's got some really good good licks in there as well. Um, and the the bass is really tempoed. It's keeping keeping time throughout the whole thing. I think that's what gets me. Uh, but it kind of sounds like a like a standing bass almost. I, I, it might be, especially that bass solo right at the end. It sounds yeah. like it might be a, a standing bass, or at least they're trying to imitate that sound. Yeah. And this one does as much as you've complained about it. Uh, well, you haven't complained that much, but this one does have the progression. Uh, electric guitar starts coming in near the end. Um, and there's uh, the the saxophone kind of swings up as it goes along. So there's there's a bit more layering go going on, but it, it could oh, yeah, use yeah, a little it, bit more. It's by no means like my least favorite rockabilly song. Yeah, uh, at least it does like, or at least tries to make some interesting things with it. It's just like <sighs> I don't know, man. I did it. I feel like I persecute this genre, but like. It persecutes me, 
<laughs> making me listen to it on like every damn rock album. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that we keep running into him. Why are they so prevalent? I think it's. Why is yeah. it? <laughs> I think that's the common thread throughout all of them. Hey, no, so no, 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 no. There's been multiple artists we listen to that has uh, have had some sort what's, of rockabilly. What's another artist? I can't remember. Um, I was gonna say uh, <laughs> Charlie Wilbur. <laughs> that was Charlie Jeff and Jeff's. Roy Orbson, who's an old time country singer. <laughs> that's true. That's true. If I looked through it, I'd probably remember more. But I think a lot of them have been have been Jeff. <laughs> just, just Jeff. Jeff's love of rockabilly. Yep. Yeah. This is like what we did back in the 1950s. Well, I think it's more so his love of Roy Orbson, who that's uh, true, that's who, true, who did that style. I can respect that he likes the sound. Mm-hmm. I don't, but you know, I do. He, he clearly, he clearly, he clearly enjoys it. So at least that comes through. I think it's funny how much you don't enjoy it. Just never is good. <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's never sounded. I've never been. Oh wow, a rockabilly song finally. <laughs> the album needed this. <laughs> Really plugs that hole in my heart. Jump into track number uh, three. Yeah, I'll stop talking about that. Track number three, Lift Me Up. So, uh, you know, kind of back to the kind of classic rock sound. Um, and uh, I think it's got a pretty pretty fire chorus. Uh, good harmonies. Chorus kind of slaps. It's got a very uh, positive message going on through it. Mm-hmm. I got to say... I almost always skip this one because it's been ruined for me. Really? Because I cannot hear that opening line, that or that main line that he says. Because um, he always oh. ends with, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I just can't. He says it in such a way that I just think of Luigi every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, I, I can't listen to the song anymore. That's it's a, a good very... song, but I just can't do it. How did you arrive at that? <laughs> It's it's just I don't know I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to unhear it now. I mean, <laughs> I don't usually think of Luigi when thinking of Jeff Lynne. <laughs> I don't know I don't know how I ended up at that, but I can't I can't yeah. listen to it now. It's Sam, a good you've song. got a beautiful you've got a beautiful broken brain. <laughs> um. It's got a really interesting effect on on the guitar. I don't know if you picked up on it. It's, it's almost like it's pulsating. I don't know how to describe it. I didn't really notice that, but I guess it was subtle enough. It's it's I don't know. It's a very interesting guitar line right at the start um, before everything else kind of comes in over it, and it continues throughout. Um, I will say the backing vocals on this one are very ELO reminiscent. Um, yes, that was that was also something I noticed. Because it's got those um, really high parts and then the very heavy uh, choral break-ins. Very classic yellow. Mm-hmm. And also it's like a bongo breakdown, yeah. like the three-minute mark. Yeah, it does. Which, I mean, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well yeah, no, I, I don't dislike it. I will say, I think the chorus does repeat a little bit too much. Uh, I mean, it's basically just the chorus. Yeah. The bongo breakdown was very needed. Um, it's it's not too bad when you're not sitting and analyzing it, but I, th- I think it needed a bit more meat. It was a bit slim. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it's like it a strong chorus, at least. Yeah, <laughs> which is good because it was mainly chorus. <laughs> it was mostly the chorus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to listen to it after this and tell me if you can... See if I can detect the Luigi-ness. Yeah. Huh? All right. On to uh, track number four, if you're ready, Sam. Yep. Nobody Home. This one's got some Lowlin singing. Mm-hmm. I really... He, I, he never sings at that lower register. I'm pretty sure that's his normal... If he was just to sing, that would be... <laughs> his normal singing voice, and he does falsetto for everything else. It's a, it's a pretty low, but uh, I dig the sailing. So it works good with the instrumentation. Mm-hmm. It's just got this, like, uh, um, it, it's kind of a slower plotting pace um, with a very simple guitar backing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also got this kind of fun call and response thing going on. You know, nobody home. Nobody help. Um, I'm not sure what to refer to that as, but 
call and response. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I, I guess that gets the message across. Um, I really love the synth in this one. It's like a mix of some kind of rock organ with something else. It it kind of reminds me of the the, um, uh, for some reason the pizza song from Spider Man Two, <laughs> the video game. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, no, it's just a fun organ sound. That's true. It it doesn't pop in the song like a super long amount of time. Mm-mm. But like it does little flourishes every now and then. Every once in a while. Every now and then. Oh. A little taste. A little, little nugget. Also has like the world's like shortest guitar solo, like 245. <laughs> yeah. It's like five seconds. It, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm tired. That, Keep going. I can, that one I can see from uh, his newest album. Where he's like, okay, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Going back to the newer albums, my favorite is the piano solo. That's just one note. <laughs> we talked about that when we did the album. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ so bad <laughs> like he's set he's 70 man <laughs> he's playing all the instruments he's gonna have to he had a, a really good corners. guitar solo and then he goes into a one note piano solo that lasts the same amount of time <laughs> anyway back to this song um this one again it it kind of gets a bit bland as it goes I wish there was a little something more to spice it up. It's it's kind of got that novelty factor going for it, but it needs just a little little extra spice, a little something something. Yeah, it's ploddingness kind of doesn't help whenever it's like a like a four minute song. Mm-hmm. Um, you do kind of get bored of it by the end of it, but you know. I still like it. It's still right. a good song. It's still decent. Jump into track number five. Check number five. September September's song. song and which you is... said was a cover. I did not realize that. Who's it by originally? Uh it's by. Uh it's by. Uh I'm pretty sure that's a cover too. Uh Sarah Va- Vong, uh, V A U G H A N. I don't know how you'd say that. Sarah Vong, I'm not familiar. Va- uh, how, does it give a pronunciation? Uh, da, da, da. I, it doesn't. It doesn't give a pronunciation on how to say her last name. She was hmm. a vocal jazz singer, born 1924. I can't see this being like a jazz standard type of thing. Um, yeah, because it does have like a, fe- a different feel. Like a very, very, but it's almost got like, a, on this song, it's almost got like a smooth, almost like slightly Western vibe to it. Mm-hmm. And she actually passed away the year this album released. Oh. So maybe it was like a tribute. I don't think she was. Well, when did the album release? I don't remember. Oh, I gotta look. Um. Oh, it was July. So she she was she did pass away, but I, I mean it could have been. Yeah, but I, I think I think it fits enough on the album. Yeah, like I, I didn't think this was a cover when I first listened to it. Although uh, um, the writers were Maxwell Anderson and Kurt Whale, so she might have even done the most famous cover of it. Mm, true. I don't know. Or they wrote it for her to sing. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent song. And there's like some female fo- vocals thrown into the song as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the rare female vocal in a Jeff Lynne song. Yeah. Uh, v- quite rare. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not his daughter. No. But it's it's okay. got a, it's got some nice electronic guitar um that's mimicking an acoustic sound, which sounds pretty nice. Mixed in with those uh soft brushes on the drum set gives a really nice calm feel to the song. Yeah, very calm song. Nice little jazz standard. Mm-hmm. Not sure if it, I mean Maybe I wish he would have gone more jazzy route, but the kind of more Western route he went is interesting too. Yeah, it it definitely gives off like uh, end of the year vibes, like cooler weather. 
fall song. Yeah. It is called September song. Yeah. I, I think it's carried by that. Those, uh, the brushes on the drum set. <laughs> Such a good sound. <laughs> you ever seen what they use to make those noises, Cooper? I haven't. It's basically just a bunch of, it's, it's a brush. I think it's plastic. Yeah. And they, for the snare, they just kind of drag it around the surface. They can tap it and drag. Right. And so it, it kind of gives that sound that it makes. And it, it's, it's, it's very pleasant. Yeah. It's very, it's very, uh, what, what's the word? Subdued. Mm hmm. Subdued drumming. Quite subdued. I'm not sure why I don't have more for that one. It's I don't know. It just kind of kind of passed me by. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a kind of a low burn song. Yeah. But we can uh, move on to the next song, which we might have a little more to say about. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you're gone, which starts with like uh, I guess like would you say like what, what what's the, what's the phrase for that like uh kind of the traditional like Indian singing stylings. Uh it's the micro tunnels. Quarter step singing. Quarter yeah. step, yeah. And this song's actually a uh, tribute to Jeff's late mother who had passed. Oh away. really? Yeah. I did not know that. Though it just kinda uh, uh, allude to like the, the kind of like a ghostly quality in this mm-hmm. song. Um so that kind of makes sense if it's about his mother's death. Mm-hmm. Um it's got I do. I do like bongos and piano before the break. Oh yeah, break. whenever like at the thirty second mark, whenever like they break in, mm-hmm. the percussion breaks in, the song picks up, but it still kind of keeps that kind of uh, emotional quality to it. That Jeff Lynne's voice is good at carrying. Yeah, very much so. And then there's that instrument that comes in at two minutes. I'm not sure what it is, but I really like it. Well, like that. I thought it was a violin, right? Or something close it, to that. It might be a vi- It's a stringed instrument, that's for sure. But it gives, me big, a, uh, gives me big, gives me big, they might be giants, uh, Constantinople vibes. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. I was thinking it might be some Asian instrument that I don't know, but it could very well just be a uh, filtered violin. Possibly. Or it just might be ignorant. Yeah. I'd also believe that. But yeah. This one I I quite like I quite like the kind of emotion mixed with kind of like the underlying energy of it. You know, mixed with that violin set, like you said. Mm-hmm. And uh Jeff's vocals on point, as always. Very emotionful. Yeah, which makes sense given the subject matter. Yeah. And then he it breaks into the um, the quarter step singing with another female uh, vocalist. Yes, who is not credited. <laughs> um, and then Jeff does it himself, which I'm curious if he knew how to do it beforehand or if he learned it for the song. Because learning quarter step singing as a Western artist can't be easy. Well, Jeff's a, a man of many talents. Yeah. Because it's hard to do for inst- it's hard to write for instruments. I can't imagine writing it for vocals. Which, uh, yeah, no, but he pulls it off pretty well. I think it's actually a pretty good mixture of like that more like Eastern style singing mixed with kind of like a more traditionally Western style like rock instrumentation. Mm. I think it pairs quite nicely. I agree. And I quite like this song. It is. It is quite good jump into uh track number seven if you're ready yeah track number seven don't say goodbye which uh the vocal stylings on this one almost has like um almost like a paul mccartney-esque uh feel to them Um, i can can see where you're coming from with that i'm pretty sure it's still jeff lynn um Mm -hmm. but i don't know the way the way he sings on it it's kind of smoother like paul i mean i guess george harrison was Feature on this album, so I'm not sure that played some sort of influence. Uh, he, um, was, he was backing vocals and instruments. He he didn't write anything. Okay. Well, still, he wasn't credited for writing anything. I'm not sure how much. I'm sure if he was in the room, he yeah. probably tossed something in. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
So, uh, uh, Jeff, maybe uh, maybe we shouldn't do the uh, rockabilly song. <laughs> Hush, George. <laughs> Back in the corner. <laughs> I don't think George would be against the rockabilly. That's true. I mean, the Beatles never did a rockabilly song. True, but the rest of the Beatles never worked with Roy Orbson. That's also true. Well, George Harrison did. And besides George, and that was after uh, the Beatles had broken up. Well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. the song, <laughs> the song, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's got a good start for me, but I feel like it falls a little bit flat. I really like, yeah, the, just a, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, no, no. You were talking. I was, uh, I really like the vocal lines and the, the short guitar solo at minute 45, but the, the chorus just repeats too much. Yeah. This is definitely one of the more, uh, underbaked, like structurally wise, mm-hmm. it just kind of like exists. I mean, it's a cute little ditty, but like. It doesn't feel like a complete song necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's got some nice moments. The harmonic lines, uh, when they all come together, are really nice. But then right at the end, there's 40 seconds of singing Don't Say Goodbye over and over again. Like he changes <laughs> his style as it goes, but it, it's too much. You don't need 40 seconds. It's only a minute. What is it? it was It's a, a three minute 40 song. So the last 40 seconds, or not even, it's a three minute. It's a 310 song. 310 song. And the last 40 seconds or don't say goodbye. <laughs> it's a chunk of song. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, pretty forgettable, but like mostly harmless. Yeah. Jump into track number eight. Track number eight. What would it take? Uh, this one coming in with uh, some kind of Springsteen energy. <laughs> yeah. That's what I got for like it kind of got some stadium sim- going on in the background. Speaking of repetitive chorus lines, <laughs> I I can't be mad at this song though. Like, it's it's got one line. There's a there's a couple a couple of verses. I think there's like two verses, and then the rest is chorus. But I just I don't know. I really like it. Um, the the really good synth line. It's got some powerful vocals. He's just going all over the place, singing the exact same words over and over again. It's just a fun song. Strong vocal hook and guitar hook. Yeah. Um, yeah, though it feels a little more like low energy than like what it should. I, I don't know how to explain like if like with the, like the synth and the guitar hook, you kind of expect it to like bring a little more to the table, but it's it's, it's a little sleepy. Hmm. At least for me. Yeah, I don't know. It's got the it's got the electric guitar line, and then it's got the acoustic and harp in there as well. I just, I just like it. I just think it's neat. Also got good vocal harmonies on the chorus. Mm-hmm. Clapping's a bit much, but you know, yeah, decent pop. The two one clap <laughs> isn't fun. I don't like that. <laughs> and that's like the stadium rock feel yeah, of it. I, I just hate two one, the two one clap now. Thanks, Green Day. <laughs> I can't listen to it without disliking it. King of all. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even well, misused fuck. in that album. They just used it every single song. We'll fight the man one target commercial at a time. <laughs> man, actually, that was the worst rockabilly song of all time. Oh, was there a rockabilly the, the, song? The, yeah, the Stab Me Through the Heart song. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. I think it was done ironically, but still. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make it sound better. It's bad ironically. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's supposed to be that way. Jump into uh, track number nine, then, if you're ready, Coop. Track number nine, Stormy Weather, which is also a cover song. The second cover. And which also has a strong Western, like, saloon vibe. Yeah, this is a very old song. And I was very confused the first time I heard this because I was like, I swear I've heard this song before, but I know I've never listened to this. Um, and I w- felt like I was very familiar, and it's because one of our roommates would sing it constantly in the apartment um, because she was a big fan of old music. And I was like, that's where I've heard this before. It bugged me for a very long time till I figured that out because I don't listen to old music. Hmm. Who did you say it was by? I didn't say who it was by. Ah. I just said it's old. Do we know who it's by? Was it was the loss of the sands of time. Uh, is it by? I think it's by uh, Ethel Waters. That might not actually be correct. 
Let me see. Yeah, yeah, at the waters. At the waters, yeah. A jazz singer. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. She was the second African American to be nominated for an Academy Award. Fun fact. Hmm. Yeah, but this song's almost got like a like imagining like a like a like a lazy saloon Mm -hmm. um, where nothing's really happening. It's got a vibe. And I do like the vocal stylings, uh, kind of the focus on Lynn's vocals with some nice backing vocals per usual on this album. Uh, oh, hmm. Sorry. He does, he does go Santa buddy on it. Um, it was, or, or, all the lines were originally about a guy and he rewrote it to be about a girl. Um, but this was the nineties. So that was a bit more <laughs> frowned upon keeping it the same, I guess. <laughs> Santa buddy, <laughs> Santa buddy. <laughs> Such a stupid song. <laughs> Just be gay for five minutes, Buble. You can do it. <laughs> it's um, a Christmas classic. Anyway, I I really love the guitar line on this one. Um, that's what pulls me in over and over and over again. I also think Jeff's voice really shines. Um, and this as well, but the guitar line is just so good. I really love whatever filters on the guitar. Yeah, no, it's it's the, the instrumentation like for a cover. It's it's got a lot of character in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually quite like this song. Um, and the instrumentation is nice, slow but full. That's mm-hmm. what I would say. Yeah, very much so. It, it's got breaks out the strings, like the full on strings, orchestral mm-hmm. strings. Yeah, it's got the choral backing. It mixes in a little bit of piano and some acoustic guitar, and it comes out to be comes out of the oven very nice. Very nice. And it's got a satisfying ending. Good, yeah, good. Well, the last 30 seconds where he kind of pops off a bit, I'm not the biggest fan of, but then it comes back with the strings, and I think that makes it yeah. for it. Because that is a that was a that was a Jeffism there. It Jeffism. It was, wasn't in the original song. He just kind of goes off because I don't know if he knew how to end it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. it, it's still a really good song. Good song. Jumping to track number 10. This track 10, Blown Away. Blown Away. And this was Just... the song that was co written by Tom Petty. Hmm. Okay. Um, it's another slow one. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Though I'm less of a fan of this one than I am of Stormy Weather. Uh, <laughs> nice uh, really bottle like slurp everybody. there. Sorry. Um, I'm drinking out of my big water bottle. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, you haven't set you haven't set up your uh, hamster. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't. I have to lick it. To... <laughs> I have to lift the bottle to my lips and drink like a heathen, yeah, like some sort of caveman. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, twenty first century man. Um, yeah, no, this this one's okay. It's got like a nice little piano and guitar solo at the two minute mark. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really know. You say it's written by Tom Petty, but I didn't really notice anything like super unique compared to the other songs written by Jeff Lynne, um, at least to my ear. I don't know. I I think this one is, shows off real, Jeff's voice really well as well, um, with a good mix of the high and the low, um, and it's much more focused on the vocals. I mean, every song on this album has been pretty vocal focused, right? Um, I don't know. It's I I got the feeling of Petty, but maybe that's just because I knew. I don't know. Um, there's some so a lot of different stuff that's hap- that happens with the backing, uh, and the guitar line at 155 just flat out reminds me of uh, Zoom, the the album, <laughs> the ELO's reunion album from the 2000s. Right. I was like, uh, is, I suppose I, mean, I don't remember well enough guitar to guitar lick right there. But, <laughs> but this album came first, so it did. yeah. So the Zoom stole from this. I I mean it's, it's the same artist working on it. Spider Man so. pointing at Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's a simpler song that you kind of need to roll into the next track. Um, I think the because what would it take is pretty high energy. Stormy weather brings it down blown away brings it down even more and then you've got save me now which we can jump to if you're ready for that coop yeah i mean (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, I, I guess I really wasn't blown away by this song. <laughs> oh, whoa! Look at look at me! Look at me! Don't blow yourself too hard over that joke. I uh, too bad it's funny. <laughs> um, track number eleven and the closer, save me now. Which is a very 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 low energy song. Yeah, shortest on the album. Mm-hmm. It's basically like uh, the closer proper. Yeah, um, like less than two minutes. It's Jeff, just Jeff. An acoustic guitar, and then halfway through, some synth comes in. Yeah, so uh, I don't have too much to say about this one, besides, you know, Jeff's vo- voice is nice as always. Mm-hmm. And it's actually quite nice to have kind of an acoustic-led uh, song on a Jeff Lynne album. Mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't really utilize the acoustic very often. It's in a lot, but it says in the company. Right, it's, like, it's like a leading to... element. Yeah, yeah. I really like this one. Uh because the harmonics, the harmonic parts when it's just him and acoustic is really nice. You can hear all of the layers there. Um, halfway through, some really bassy synth comes in as just kind of back to like provide a little bed for it all. And it's just, you know, a really calm song saying, hey, the earth is dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I kind of got from it, too. But, I mean, that's what it is. Like all. And this was the 90s. Good thing we fixed that. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so that, I I think this is the, this is the only place you could put this song. Oh, yeah. The the, the last three songs on this album had to be in this order at the end. There was nowhere else you could put them. Yeah. That uh, closes out the album, yeah. Like we said, pretty pretty tight, short eleven songs. Yeah, we managed to talk for about the album for longer than the album runs, <laughs> which is fair. So, uh, Sam, what was your favorite song on this album? My favorite song of this album, I have to say, is probably "Stormy Weather." Uh, mm-hmm. I really like it. It's a really good cover. There was a period of time where I would just listen to it on loop. I liked it that much. Um, it's just nice. And it, I usually when I listen to it, I do listen to the two songs after because they just they just flow together so well, and it's it's a good time. What about you, Cooper? I actually really like uh, "Now You're Gone." That is um, a good song as well. It's uh, like I said, it's got an interesting blending of genres there. I like the kind of ghostly quality of it and the emotion in Lynn's voice. Um, and it's got some just uh, just tight instrumentation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I quite like it as a song. It vibes with me, but I also agree with Stormy Weather. That's probably my second favorite. Yeah. I'm yeah. just a very, uh, very solid cover. It has like its own character. Mm-hmm. Now You're Gone is also very good. I, I can't get enough of Quarter Steps, man. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I, but, it's uh, a very fitting tribute. But for every light, there must be dark. So, Sam, what's your least favorite song on the album? Uh, don't Say Goodbye. Not, not really a fan of that. It's kind of lame it's all right but it's definitely the weakest song on the album it's the most half-baked um chorus repeats too much 40 seconds of don't say goodbye over and over again and uh yeah could live without it what about you Coop? but i i think i know what your answer is gonna be well i gotta say i wasn't a really big fan uh, don't let go oh the uh, rockabilly <laughs> one. Oh yeah yeah there's just some usually i'm a big fan <laughs> uh no yeah i mean i mean i hate to, to to be a broken record here on rockabilly but like jeez, <laughs> stop chef <laughs> it's like your what eighth rockabilly song they never work they're good uh, no they're not yes they are everybody likes them but you no one likes rockabilly. Okay, if everyone likes a rockabilly, why is anyone trying to make rockabilly songs? Wasn't there a rockabilly song on uh, the newest Green Day album? <laughs> but, 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 but no one liked that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was there, and, that, and, and it was done ironically. <laughs> it's still a rockabilly song. Mm, okay, still. Also, Green Day is like fifty years old now. <laughs> they're not hip. They're not with it. Oh, Matt's gonna have words for you after this. <laughs> look it's gonna drive to your house and fight you i hope i want him to visit me <laughs> <laughs> no but uh yeah not not uh 
that did not change my opinion. Yeah. On the matter. So we got to rate it now. Do you? We wanna, do. Do you want to do the rating system text? I can't I, remember who did it. I, last I, I will do the rating t- system. Um, so here on the audio shop, of course, um, we like to do a food review. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is we like to oh, rate our music think. based on. <laughs> I like to read our music based on uh, car knowledge because um, me and Sam are actually both have a collectively about two dozen years, um, 24 years of car knowledge between the two of us. Uh, Sam was from uh, 48 to 52 and I was from uh, 86 to uh, present. <laughs> that doesn't add up to 24. <laughs> no, I think your math's a bit off there. <laughs> um. But yeah, so we uh, we for our top score we give it a, a showroom. Hot Wheels, I think that helps. Yeah, Hot Wheels also helps. Uh, Hot Wheels are you know they'd be like a showroom. Yeah, you know, the tip to top. This is just the cream de la creme. You know, can't miss it. But then working down to the bottom, you catch a scrapyard. This is your you know ear bleeding, eye gouging. You know, get this off of me. I, I can't listen to this anymore. Kind of music. Imagine Dragon's Origins. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of our, our benchmark for it. I don't it. think anything else has gotten scrapyard since we listened to that album. <laughs> Truly beneath the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, and then we'll give like our rating, like high or low, depending on our mood that day. So, uh, Sam, what is your rating for this album? I'm gonna give it a like new. Um, mm, okay. I really like it. I listen to it a lot. Um, it's on my standard play drive to work sing along a music playlist but i'm under no delusions for this one it's it's okay it's a it's a fine album you know it's not oh my god my life was changed i mean every little thing's good um and there's several very good songs on here but i I, unless you really like jeff lynn like i do i don't (laughs) think you'd be remiss you know just to listen to the good songs i think it's a very good album you know, there's a lot of musical history behind it and all that jazz. Um, and I really like huh. it, but I definitely think there are some weak points. Yeah, I'll probably have to go and give it a fixer upper myself. Um, definitely not one of Jeff, my favorite Jeff Lynn project. Oh, I mean, we listen to a lot of them. Um, this definitely is like, it's not like anything egregious, but it's also a little boring. Yeah, like, you know, there's a couple songs on this that I, I, I quite like. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's a little forgettable. Nothing like super outrageous or bad. You know, he's a solid artist, so he doesn't really make bad music. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it doesn't feel... I don't know, the, the, the cover of the album kind of sums it up, right? You know, Jeff Lynne's just kind of an armchair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's a little autopilot for me. You know, he, he's made much better music, uh, personally. Uh, but, you know, so, you know, if you're a big ELO fan or big Jeff Lynne fan, you know, it's worth giving a listen. But, you know, beyond that, it's kind of like... Give it a look if you want to, but you know, you want, you aren't, I don't think you're missing out on like essential Jeff Lynn if you skip this album. It was his first solo album. Well, yeah, in like 1990. Yeah. <laughs> still been performing for like 20 years. Yeah. You, you, but you know, um, what, think of a modern day example uh, Panic at the Disco. I mean, his first solo album, Death of the Bachelor, is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, actually, his first solo album was great. The, the rest of them, <laughs> not so much, but maybe bad example then, because <laughs> he started good and then got worse. Yeah, but, you know, it's decent. It's, it's good enough. I, I, I may, maybe a little blasphemy missed on a, <laughs> uh, thanks, Lenning. It's but okay. It's not I gotta the speak strongest the truth. album in the world. Now, if you were bad-mouthing I, uh, time, we'd have to have words. No, no, no. I just want Jeff to be a better artist. Jeff, if you're listening to this, you know, I still think you got into you and you turn improve. He's listening, Cooper. Um, <laughs> I don't think he knows what a podcast is. <laughs> I'm sure he knows what a podcast is. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Um, I mean, he made that meme music video of himself. He's got to, like, he's got to know. Mm, I think uh, he's just being cheeky. <laughs> rolling over to, is- the, to the spare tire now which is uh, whatever else we've been listening to. We've got two weeks worth. So, uh, Cooper, what have what, 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 what you been listening to? What have I been listening to? I would say, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder, actually. Really? Yes, his uh, earlier stuff. 
Um, Cause you know, of course we've all heard the classics of Stevie, uh, songs in the key and life and all that jazz. But uh, I want to go back and listen to uh, little Stevie, young Stevie. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not sure how much you know about Stevie wonder, Sam, but uh, he actually released his first album when he was just 12 years old. Really? He was a, he is a musical genius. I did not as they know said. that. And, um, his first album, uh, yeah, it was, uh, from in 1962 when he was just 12 years old. Um, and, uh, it's very interesting going back to listen to, cause he released like, like six albums, in like six years, like from 12 to like 18. Um, and it's interesting cause it's like, obviously, you know, he's 12, so it's not like he's <laughs> super knowledgeable about the music industry. Mm-hmm. So you can really tell that, you know, like they were trying different things with him cause he obviously was very talented. Um, but they like, one of his albums is like full of jazz standards. One of them is like a like a teen beach album, <laughs> Stevie huh. at the Beach. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting to see like a very young artist who would obviously become Stevie Wonder, right? Yeah, no one of the greatest selling artists of all time. To any of his uh, young stuff at all? It's it's worth it just for like kind of the uh, kind of the history of it because you can tell he's very talented, but also like kind of struggling to find his voice because mm-hmm. he's like you know twelve. <laughs> When did he go blind? Uh, was he blind from birth? He was born. I remember reading this. Basically, he had like complications at birth, and they put him in like one of those like oxygen tanks, mm-hmm. which can sometimes make you go blind, and oh, it did. So, so he was blind basically almost immediately after birth. Okay, so he w- it wasn't even a condition or anything. It was a, a result of a procedure that made him go blind. Yeah, I forget the exact details, but it's basically, his entire life. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting to to hear him kind of uh you know. Find his voice, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I'm up to uh, even like just like a couple years down the road. It's like albums up tight and down to earth actually have some some bangers on them. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, interesting. And I'll probably keep going through. What about you, Sam? What have you been listening to? Uh, podcast. <laughs> I haven't really been listening to music. Um listen to uh, all i want for christmas is lapis uh what's it no <laughs> so no funny. no stop get out of here um what else uh we were looking up the worst christmas songs of all time and somehow um what was number one uh wonderful christmas time by Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney was number which one. Which is a great Christmas which song. Which is actually a really good Christmas song. I'm not sure why that was on number one of, like, that was one I was like, all right, it's too early for Christmas music, but I'll listen to this one because it's actually good. But I think it's because it's got such good synth in it uh, that I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> skewed. You're skewed towards the synth heavy. Mm-hmm. Paul McCartney. Sounding slightly bored, but also it kind of works. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I've not really been listening to all that much. Um, there was, I've been, when I was at work, I was listening to just my liked uh, playlist on random, the JoJo theme, themes, <laughs> plural. Good, good. Um, bloody stream. Uh, let me pull the list up so I can see it. Where is the list? Uh, is it this? No, it is not that. Liked songs. Here it is. Uh, Bloody Stream, something, whatever the Golden Wind theme is. Um, I can't pronounce it because it's Italian. Uh, and then Stardust <laughs> Crusaders, which is uh, Jotaro's theme. Just listen to those. Uh, there's a couple of the Miracle Musical songs on my list that were. That of course, of course. Strawberry Fields Forever. That's a great song. That is a great song. Uh, some Steely Dan, Reeling in the Years. Love that song. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, some Cassiopeia, Freak Jack, jazz artist, uh, Asian jazz artist. It's really good. Uh, a little bit of Electronica, Snail's House, and um, Mega Neko. Some Tally Hall, Taken for a Ride. That's a really good <laughs> song. Yeah, Matt, yeah, yeah. Just for now, just, just pronounce it the way Matt typed it. The way it's written. Yes, I, I, I have it written in front of me. That doesn't just help. read words forehead. <laughs> read words forehead. But yeah, a little, little, little bit of everything. Uh, some Mingus Big Band, Mona. Oh, that's that's some, a really some, good song. Charles, Charles Mingus. Yeah, classic. Some, some good jazz. It was especially helpful after the election because you know, 
my coworkers would just sit at the back table and be uh, political pundits for the entirety of their lunch breaks, which, you know, they would add an extra 45 minutes to because they were talking politics. Hmm. So I don't go to work without my headphones now. The Mingus drowns it out. Mm -hmm. Such a good song. It is. Well, anyway, that was the Audio Shop Podcast. Thank you for stopping by. No, no, no. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for stopping by. And uh, we will will catch you next week. And if you've got any suggestions, there's a little box down below on Twitch where you scroll down. You You can type it in there. We'll probably get to it eventually. Um, Eventually. And right next to that is a picture of Jeff Lynn, who you've seen because you just saw him on screen. <laughs> Attached you, to a turkey. <laughs> you click you click that, and it'll take you to YouTube, where all the past episodes are. And if you're listening on YouTube and you want to listen live, you can come on over to Twitch. Uh, dot TV slash audio underscore shop and listen to us Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. What about the Twitter, Cooper? Oh, the Twitter. <laughs> I was wondering why you're going silent. <laughs> that's why I paused. Like, oh, yeah. The Twitter at AudioShop14. Because that's, that's um, what you do. That is. I run that. Um, you'll find, uh, we'll let you know what we're listening to next. I imagine next week will probably be another Jeff Lynn album yeah, that we, we haven't decided we yet. figure that out for thanks, Lynn. Uh, he's got a myriad of albums, so. And then probably won't do Thanksgiving weekend, I imagine. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, be doing Thanksgiving. Yeah. Which, of course, means listening through entire, all of Jeff Lynn's albums. Every single song Jeff Lynn has ever been a part of or thought of. Yes. <laughs> well, get out of my room, Mom. I don't care if the turkey's ready. I'm listening to time again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just have headphones in and listen to that the entirety of, <laughs> entirety of my life. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so stop by there and uh, give it a look, and we'll let you know. It's always 8 p.m. Eastern, so uh, and we'll just let you know the album. Mm-hmm. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you next time. See you later, shoppies. See you later, shoppies. See you. See you. <laughs>